Let's learn how to use the SPI Express VI to transmit and receive integer arrays and character strings. Let's get started by looking under the MyRio palette. Here's the SPI Express VI. Stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. We can pick between A and B connectors, and this is a reminder of the pin numbers that you would use. Three different modes to select from. I'll go ahead and leave this one configured for write mode. I'm going to right click here and choose create control. And this control default name is frames to write. And this is an array of 16-bit unsigned integers. I'm going to do a control click and drag to make a copy. Double click on that one. I'll set this one up for read mode. You see that it produces an array of results. I'll create an indicator for that. And it also needs to know how many frames that you actually want to read. That control is an unsigned 32-bit integer. The way this would work then is you need to specify how many frames that you need to read. I'm going to instead show you how you can do a simultaneous read and write operation. So I'm going to go back and reconfigure this one for write read mode. SPI is really interesting because it has dedicated transmit and receive lines, and that means you can do simultaneous bidirectional data transfer. To illustrate this property, I'm going to connect my output, that's the master out servant in, to the input master in, servant out. And with this SPI loopback test, we'll be able to write and read simultaneously. Let me connect or reconnect my output indicator right here. Go ahead and insert some numerical values into this, this array. Go with a total of five values. I'm going to go ahead and now run the VI. So at the same time that we were writing, we were also reading those values. And we see that the red values are exactly the same as the written values. Now you can't see this, but I'm removing the loopback connection and rerunning. We see the values now are all 255. And that in binary looks like all ones, and that's due to the pull-up resistor. When I reconnect, then we're back to where we started. Let's take a look at another important parameter. This is the frame length, and you can set values anywhere from 4 to 16 bits. And that's why the data type associated with this VI is U16, or unsigned 16-bit integer. Now let's move on to see how you can work with strings. That is, if you want to send and receive strings with this Express VI. I'm going to place a string control on the front panel. Give it a little bit of text. And the first thing we need to do involves converting the strings to their byte values. I'll swap that out as an input. You'll notice the coercion dot is showing up because of a mismatch in data type. Go back to conversions and let me resolve that issue by connecting in a conversion from 8 bits to 16 bits. I'll finish reconnecting and then run the VI. Let's see what happens. Now the character string has been resolved to an array of bytes, and we see those byte values indicated here in decimal. I'm going to change the display to the backslash codes display. Here we see a backslash to indicate things like white space, such as spaces, or you can even type in the hex code directly, so backslash capital A capital E. Now, I think that corresponds to this 174, and to more clearly see that, I'm going to change the display format for this array indicator to hexadecimal. Then back here on the Appearance tab, I want to make it clear that we're viewing these as hex values. And sure enough, there's the AE value showing up at the end. 
All right, now on the read side, we can do a similar thing. I'm going to convert the array of bytes, which represents our string, return that back to string format. Again, I'd like to resolve the coercion dots by first converting the U16 data type to byte format, or U8, and then we can create a string indicator. Let's compare those. Write the string, read the string. Looks good, we get the same thing. And evidently this hex code AE translates into the familiar circle R for the registration mark.